All right, moving forward with tonight's media availabilities, we are now joined by tonight's winner of the 75th annual Cookout Southern 500 at Darlington Raceway. Driver and crew chief of the number 14, Stuart Haas Racing Ford Mustang Dark Horse, Chase Briscoe and Richard Boswell. We'll hop straight into questions. If you have a question, please raise your hand. We'll do our best to get a mic to you. Uh, we'll begin the back over here with Matt Weaver. Matt Weaver, Sports Dot. Uh, for Boswell and for Chase, too, really, uh, I forget which restart it was, but there was a restart where you said, you know, you know, 320 employees have your back, and uh, we, we all believe in you, and one last chance to win this race for this team and company. That's a lot of pressure. I mean, I feel like not being in the car, that's pretty heavy. Did you feel comfortable saying that? And then, Chase, what is it like to hear that and the, the weight of it all? Yeah, I think that uh, I think Chase knows. It is a lot of weight and, you know, Chase and I had a conversation this week about, you know, we had a conversation before Daytona, thinking that Daytona was, you know, maybe our best opportunity. Just kind of the, with the way our, our season's gone and our Speedway stuff and, you know, Chase reassured me Saturday night after Daytona that if we brought him our best, he was going to bring our best and I told the guys in the shop that, you know, like we do every week. If, if we give him what he needs, I, I can assure you he can win this race. And I think when you back him in a corner like that, we've seen it in, in, his, in the past with his career um, and, the, and kind of the path that he's been on. When you back him in a corner, he's dangerous. And I love seeing this Chase Briscoe. I, can, I cannot wait to race with this Chase Briscoe for the next 10 weeks. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> you know, like Richard said, I feel like I definitely run better under heavy pressure uh, for whatever reason. Like, I just – always been like that for whatever reason and yeah you know when when Richard told me that I'm like emotional everybody knows that I started tearing up in the car thinking about like how much was riding on my shoulders at that point um but yeah I, I love that stuff like I love the game seven heavy pressure moment like for whatever reason I just feel like I do a lot better under those situations than not having a lot of pressure um so, yeah, I mean, I put a lot of pressure on myself just going into this week. You know, last week at Daytona was the worst race by, I mean, a mile I've ever raced in my entire career. Um, I was embarrassed, like so embarrassed. I, I texted Richard literally right before we got on the plane. I said, I don't ever want to talk about this race again. We're not going to talk about it this week. I promise you I'll make it up to you next week. And, uh, yeah, I just I, – I knew that – um, it was going to be one of those do or die moments, right? And we talked about it before the race today. This is the the last bullet in the chamber, and we knew that this was going to be a really good opportunity for us, um, just based on how we raced in the spring. And if we could just get our car a little bit better, and if we executed all night long, I knew we were going to be in the mix, and uh, we executed, and we were obviously in the mix at the end. And also, uh, will you guys have what you need to make a serious run at this the next ten weeks? Yeah, I mean, 100%. I mean, we, we've we been shutting down since May, and they haven't shut us off yet. So, um, yeah, I, I think we'll be totally fine. Obviously, it's going to be an uphill battle, but we uh, we feel confident about it. Yeah, I mean, we've known this is coming, right? And, and the questions have been the same every week. And, you know, we, we respect the questions because that's what you guys do, and that's your job. And, you know, we, I've just tried to – remind the guys that it's our job to build fast race cars right we, we know what people are going to ask we can't help that that's their job we respect it um but we're gonna we're gonna continue to work our butts off and you know i think i, I told told lee spencer earlier today that or earlier this evening that it's really sad what's happening because this is you know i've been at stewart haas racing for eight years and this is the best I've ever seen four cup drivers work together. The best I've ever seen four crew chiefs work together. And, you know, I'll be honest, like, I've got four teams helping me for these next three weeks. And that's what I'm looking forward to. I'm looking forward to going to battle with, with all four teams. I think, I, I know that we have a group of guys that support this 14 and are going to do everything um, that they can. And I, I think I told Chase at the beginning of the year, we needed a mantra for the, for the season and for the year. And it was going to be one goal for all. That was the 14. And, um, you know, I think, I think tonight that, that, that just came full circle and came to fruition. We'll go to up here, from here, Bob. 
Uh, Bob Parker's Fox Sports. What's it like to have, I mean, you're kind of, you've been in that position before, but what's it like to have Kyle Busch breathing down your neck in that situation? <laughs> and, uh, and what were you, did you feel like, did you run those last 10 laps perfectly, or were you, or was it just, yeah. man, you hold, holding on? Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, whenever I got the lead, I knew I was going to be in a really good position. Um, then on the restart, you know, Christopher, when they gave us the one to go and he picked behind me, he came up behind me into one and hit me and, like, told me he was going to just shove me, give me a huge shove on the start. And he, he obviously did that, which got me to the, the lead. And, like, two laps later, after I watched Kyle Busch pit behind me, here he is in second. I was like, you've got to be kidding me. Like, I've worked 300 and something laps just to get to the lead, and now Kyle's going to come and steal it from us. And it was definitely deja vu um, because that Xfinity race, I was sideways way loose at the end, and he just kept running me down, running me down, running me down. And, uh, yeah, I, I hit the wall like I did in the Xfinity race with, like, two to go. And, yeah, I was waiting for him to do, obviously, whatever he had to do to, to get in the playoffs too. And, and, you know, kudos to him for, for racing me super, super clean. So, um, yeah, the fact that – both of my Darlington wins have came, you know, trying to hold off Kyle Busch is pretty cool from just a personal note because that guy is one of the greatest of all time. So, uh, yeah, definitely, though, felt like it was uh, 2020 Xfinity all over again. Go up here with Jordan. Jordan Bianchi, The Athletic. Uh, this question's for both of you. Going into this, going into Daytona, it's always, you know, wild card. Anybody can win, right? And going into this race, it kind of seemed the consensus was that it wasn't going to be anybody's race. Only a select few could win. Did you guys coming in here feel like you guys could pull the upset tonight? Like you, this was this was as much your race as anybody else's. Yeah, I, I felt like it for sure. Um, you know, in the spring we ran fifth here. I think we started like twelfth, and we just like nickel and dimed our way to fifth, like all race long, and we just never could get the track position. In this race, when I qualified third yesterday, I knew if I could just keep it in the top five, like that was the goal from lap one, keep it in the top five, and if I do that, I'm going to be in the mix. And it was a frustrating night. Um, I watched Kyle Larson lead like 320 laps, like 20 car lengths behind him, and like could just never get by him. And I felt like if I could ever get by him, I would be good. But yeah, I, I thought coming into this weekend that this was a really good opportunity. And truthfully, I, I thought I felt way better about coming to Darlington than I ever did Daytona, just because I felt like we kind of controlled more of our own destiny, and I knew that our stuff was going to be good. And I felt like I was going to be, you know, good because I'm typically pretty good around this place, and I knew that we'd be in the mix. Second question. This is for Richard. Uh, we've heard a lot from the drivers about what's going on at SHR and how they've kind of dealt with it. From your perspective and the crew guys' perspective, what's it been like? You've been mad. You're frustrated. Like as the doors are closing. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think for those of us that have been there for quite some time, I think it's sad, right? Like it, it sucks. It's this is family. All every employee there. You know, I, I would have it Christmas dinner. Um. So so that part of it is sad, and you know, I think. The struggle and, and the difficulty that's come with it has been we have a job to do and that hasn't changed and, and whether it's 60 hours a week or not like it's turned into 70 you know and I've told people I can't tell you how many how many guys I have in my office every week wondering what my what do I think where should I go I'm, I'm worried about my future Right, and you have to have those conversations. Just from an empathy standpoint, you have to you have to take those guys in and, and let them know that you care. And you know that's just added more work and more hours. And um, you know I would say that's been the biggest difference is just trying to to be mindful of what everybody's going through, but also know that we have a job to do and um, try to do our best to bring the best cars we can every week. We'll hit Pete and then we'll go to Dustin. Uh, Pete Yacobelli with the Associated Press uh, for both. For both of you, Chase and Richard, um, have you got your minds around the idea of, hey, we're in the playoffs now. We got a plan for the playoffs, and how do you compete against when all the power programs have everybody there again? You know, the four Hendrick drivers are there, the four Gibbs drivers are there, Penske drivers are there. How is the plan unfolding to kind of be in in competition with them? in this title chase yeah i mean the way i look at it is we got nothing to lose right like and if you can win at darlington you can win it anywhere on the schedule this is probably the toughest place to win from just uh it takes the whole package you, your picker's got to be on it your car's got to be good um it takes everything so yeah from that standpoint uh, i feel like it's totally fine yeah 
Yeah, I feel the same way. I think that I think this is a big sigh of relief. Um because man, I think I think the 14 team is really really excited about the next three races. We've had them kind of on our schedule. Just if if and how how can we find a way to make the playoffs because we feel like the first three races can be one of our strongest rounds. We had a, a, a great run at Atlanta earlier this year. Chase does a great job at Bristol. We were able to do the tire test there and you know, I feel like we made great strides at, at Watkins Glen last year before we had some tire issues, but um, we're looking forward to it. Daddy, somebody do me. Is that Dustin here? Yeah. Dustin, Long, Dustin Long, NBC Sports. Um, Chase, what what does this what does this place mean to you? And and I I preface it with you when you talk about that Xfinity win, and know that that came probably in the depths of a despair that most people can't understand and can't relate to and then to go through what you've gone through this year what you had to go through tonight and then to have your son right there next to you and everything that this track represents how do you put it into words what this place is being yeah it's it's hard to put it into words truthfully it's something that i mean it's it's pretty crazy just how god works right like you know, like we come here two days after having a miscarriage and are able to, to win and beat Kyle Busch. And then, you know, four years removed, I win here again, beating Kyle Busch, but now I have my son with me. And Marissa's here, pregnant with twins that could literally come at any point. Um, yeah, it's just funny how it all works out, right? Um, and just to have them here, um, you know, Brooks has never seen me win. I mean, obviously, you watched it at Phoenix on TV, but. You know, for him to get to experience this and then for Marissa to be here, you know, when I won all those races during COVID, like she was never there. Um, obviously, when I won at Phoenix, she wasn't there. This is the last race she's coming to. Um, so, yeah, she's been telling me like all weekend, like this is you got to get it done. Like think of that as motivation. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it's pretty cool to uh, to to win with them here. And Brooks has actually been telling me the last three days, I got to beat Kyle Larson and Kyle Busch. That's all he's told me. And for him to, to come out to where I had to beat Kyle Larson to Kyle Busch, uh, it's pretty ironic. And um, from a, a racing perspective, can you talk me through the, the restart and the three-wide move and, and, and all that? Uh, from the outside, it looked like that was a dramatic and daring move. Maybe from your seat, that was like, hey, it was right there and it was easy to make. Yeah, I, I need to watch it back because uh, I think I, I started inside second row. Ross was on older tires, so I didn't want to pick behind him. Um, you know, it, I was kind of bummed when it when I saw how it played out because I was going to be on the front row with Kyle, and I felt like the restart before that, I almost beat him heads up. Um, so I was kind of ticked off that I was going to be second row after our picker did an incredible job to get the front row. And somehow I got to the top in one and two. Like, I don't remember if Ty Gibbs somehow cleared me or what. And I just remember I tried to, like, get a huge run off of two because I knew they were going to be too wide. And this car gets a, a really big draft. Um, so I got a huge run. And my car, at least everybody that I was racing with up front, my car was the only one that could run the bottom in three and four. So I knew early in a run I had that kind of in the back of my hand, back of my mind. And I had that big run. I went to the inside. I felt like I was going to be okay even if I had to run the bottom. And I was surprised Kyle didn't cover and, like, block me farther left. And, yeah, I knew we were three wide, but I knew Ross was leading. It was going to kind of stack that middle lane up. So I just went in there wide open. And uh, I knew I was going to literally clear Larson by, like, an inch. Um, and I kind of just – I wasn't going to let myself not win a crown jewel by not clearing myself on Kyle Larson. If you go back and watch the Coke 600, I had the race one with four to go, and I would let him back by when I was, you know, an inch clear – um so yeah i was just taking it all the way to the wall and i knew that was my only shot to win the race like i said i'd watched him lead you know 300 something laps right behind him so i knew my car was just as good as his it was just a matter of who was going to get clean air and that was the only opportunity i had and the last thing is uh what was it like to get that photo in victory lane with marissa and brooks and yeah it was uh super special i wish brooks would have rode in the car with me boswell smoked him in the head out on the racetrack and he was <laughs> screaming and crying uh so, yeah, I wish I would have got to experience that, but uh, I'll just have to uh, to win again with him there. But, yeah, it was super special to to be able to, to get to experience that um, for sure. That's something that we're cherished forever, and, you know, he probably won't remember it, but I certainly will. We'll go to Chase Folsom, then we'll wrap up with Deb Williams. 
Chase Folsom from com. Chase, in your seven years with SHR, you've been through so many ups and downs and moments of uncertainty. What does it mean to you to have one final shot to go win a title with these guys? Yeah, it's huge. Um, you know, I'm a diehard Stuart Haas fan, right? Like, that's the car I cheered for growing up, and, and I've seen that car win time and time and time again and, and win a championship. And it's been 90-something races since that car's been in victory lane, and this is – you know, we had 11 chances left to do it, um, and we've we've been decent this year. We've been close a couple times, but um, you know, to to be able to do it, like it would have been awesome if we won next week, but it would have stunk, right? Like now we at least have a chance to go win a championship, and you know, we don't have any playoff points or anything like that. But at the same time, we were below the cut line the whole time last time we went to the round of eight and you know we were talking earlier when matt asked that question i kind of love the back up against the wall thing and that's certainly you know what we're going to have now so we just got to go and if we do like what we did tonight i mean we can beat anybody it's just a matter of putting it all together and you know our pit crew did an incredible job tonight it's going to take that through the course of the playoffs and yeah it's definitely cool to uh you know win for Stuart haas you know tony called and you know just to hear how excited he is and um yeah, just for, for everybody, right? Like, from a morale standpoint, it's huge at our building because um, it's been tough. It's, it's definitely uh, just a weird time right now there. And for me to be there for seven years and, and be like family with a lot of those guys, it uh, means a lot. Close with Deb. Deb Williams, Auto Week. Um, Chase, on the front stretch, you said that you were sideways counter steering like you were in a sprint car. With the way this track wears out tires, how did your sprint car experience benefit you tonight? Yeah, it's huge. I mean, every time you come here, I feel like the dirt guys kind of excel. I mean, you still have some guys like a Denny Hamlin or Truex or guys like that. But, yeah, there at the beginning of the race, it's, you know, me, Reddick, Larson, and Bell all up there. And this track just is a lot like sprint car racing because you have way more power. You have to be comfortable slipping and sliding around. And then the other thing is, is at this racetrack, more than anywhere else, you are constantly just searching for grip. You have to – search 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 and try to find grip and manipulate your car to do things that it doesn't want to do and um you have to you have to be comfortable being uncomfortable here um so yeah i, I think it's you know no surprise that sprint car guys and just dirt guys in general typically run good here um just because you know we're used to sliding around thank you thank you all right chase richard congrats on becoming crown jewel champions at the lady in black yeah thank you appreciate Thanks. it